Verizon is joining AT&T and partnering with AST Space Mobile to bring cellular service to cell phones directly from satellites. Is this exciting? Is it real? And how does it compare to the initiative that T-Mobile and SpaceX are doing with Starlink? We got some details. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on satellite internet from space directly to cell phones. This is technology that seems like science fiction, but it is actually happening with a vision of eliminating dead zones by basically having satellites in orbit acting as, well, flying cell towers zooming by. Now, this is a really hard technology to solve because well, cell phones are designed to really talk to cell towers that are about maybe 10 to 20 miles away tops, as opposed to satellites that are zipping by hundreds of miles overhead, traveling thousands of miles per hour. So complicated, tricky technology. And to do it and to make it work with existing standard stock unmodified cell phones requires some pretty impressive satellites. And there's been several initiatives that have been going from the realm of science fiction to well, they're actually starting to get close. One of the leading companies that has been pioneering working on this since 2018 is called AST Space Mobile. And uh, they've been one of the first to say that they have the technology to be able to do this. And they've actually been partnered with AT&T since the very beginning. And they've been done a few test satellites, including last year, they did an absolutely massive test satellite called Blue Walker 3 that proved that they can do um, 4G and 5G voice calls, text messaging, and even data connections. They showed a 14 megabit per second data connection to their test satellite from a standard stock unmodified phone. Very impressive stuff in partnership with AT&T. And so now that they've proven their technology can work, they're trying to sign up carriers and customers around the world. And they've got 45 carriers around the world now who say they're on board and they will help fund and invest in Space Mobile to get enough satellites launched to bring out commercial service. And well, it always is assumed in the USA, their partner would be AT&T. Big news last week, AT&T has given Space Mobile clearance to also sign up Verizon. So now Verizon and AT&T are both going to be using Space Mobile and both sharing some of their cellular spectrum with Space Mobile to let Space Mobile essentially build cell towers in the sky for them. So it's kind of unprecedented to see AT&T and Verizon working closely together like this via a partner, but it also does make technical sense. It does make it easier for this sort of service to be deployed without interference. And well, it helps them team up because they're both sweating from the threat of competition from T-Mobile and Starlink, who have been partnered on a similar initiative since 2022. They're calling it coverage above and beyond. And that is basically a T-Mobile piggyback payload on um, some Starlink satellites that does a very similar thing of broadcasting a cellular signal, in this case using uh, T-Mobile's band 2, a tiny sliver of it, down to give service everywhere, eliminating dead zones. So that's exciting. And well, we've already covered this on this channel several times. Um, SpaceX and Starlink and T-Mobile, they've actually started launching the test satellites and have recently said they're on track to have some commercial service by the end of 2024. So how does what SpaceX is working on with Starlink direct to sell compare with what Space Mobile is doing with AT&T and Verizon? And they have some pretty significant technical differences and they're both very different than what a lot of people assume when they think I'm going to get satellite service to my phone. They're imagining Starlink broadband on their phone. They're imagining streaming all the things everywhere. This is very different than that. First off, um, the, the, these signals are coming from very far away and to do it requires very large antennas. Um, Space Mobile's kind of their biggest innovation is their antennas are the largest civilian antennas that have ever been put into low earth orbit. Their test satellite was 693 square feet of unfolding gigantic antenna to talk to phones. And that is a big deal. Their future satellites will be 2,400 square feet of antenna to be able to bring signal down. And that lets Space Mobile reach um, peak theoretical speeds of 120 megabits per second per satellite 
beam. And wow, that seems that's fast enough to do pretty much anything you'd want on your phone. But think this through. That's per beam. The beam is covering hundreds of square miles. And that means that's divided amongst all the potential customers that are online inside of that hundred square miles. So you're going to get a lot smaller, tiny fraction of that speed, but you'll actually might be able to have a data connection, do a little bit of web browsing, um, make voice calls and other interesting things with what Space Mobile is deploying. This is very different than the, at least the first phase of what T-Mobile and Starlink are doing because they're, they don't have these gigantic antenna systems. They're doing a much smaller piggyback payload on the Starlink V2 mini satellites. And they're saying that their beams will have a capacity of seven megabits per second divided amongst all the customers in that beam area. So much, much tinier capacity. And um, well, that's why T-Mobile and SpaceX are saying that their initial uh, efforts are going to be just text messaging, no web browsing, no pictures, no nothing, just text messaging and very low bandwidth tasks to roll out at first. Now, over time, as there are more satellites and there are, are you know, SpaceX is working on their second generation V2 satellite that will have space for bigger antennas on it, that might change and there might be broadband from uh, Starlink's initiative. But Space Mobile does have an interesting technical advantage with their satellites and what their raw capabilities are at first. But now, well, SpaceX has the opposite. It has a huge advantage in that they own their own rockets and can launch rapidly, easy, easily. They're piggybacking this along Starlink. So they've already got thousands of Starlink satellites and they've got probably a couple dozen of their cellular equipped ones that are in orbit now. So they are well on track to having enough to turn on text messaging service by the end of 2024. Space Mobile, they only have one big test satellite up right now. And they're saying come July or August this year, they will be launching their first five commercial Space Mobile satellites to start putting real service into orbit. Of course, launching via hiring SpaceX to do the launch, of course, because SpaceX almost has a monopoly on launch. But it takes a lot more than five satellites to provide 24 seven coverage over the continental US. Space Mobile will need at least 45 to 60 satellites out of their planned licensed goal constellation of 200 plus um, before they can have 24 seven service. So how long will that take? Will it be Anything they're able to offer by the end of 2024, will it happen in 2025? This is a big open question. We have to wait and see um, that once they start racing to bring commercial service out when that comes along. And then the other thing people are misled about, they think the speeds are going to be crazy fast. They think it's going to be here tomorrow. And they think it's going to be just free and included with their cellular plans when satellite direct to cell rolls out. And that is also not necessarily the case just because T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon have the equivalent of cell towers in orbit doesn't mean they're just going to make all of their plans work everywhere as normal. Um, they've got, well, they got to pay for all of this service. They got to pay Space Mobile, and they have to figure out how to reduce demand on the satellites because they don't want to overload them at first until the capacity is built out. So will it cost extra? Will it be only on premium plans, maybe a feature of the top end plans from the carriers or Space Mobile's shown mock-up UIs of you know, satellite day passes where you opt in per day to get the satellite coverage straight to your phone? The pricing will remain to be determined. Fortunately, because this is turning into a competitive race, we'll see uh, the carriers trying to compete with each other to have the most enticing offer. So a lot of interesting stuff is happening when it comes to satellite direct to sell from space. There's a lot of misunderstandings out there of what this is all actually going to add up to. But the one thing is for certain is it is happening. The technology is coming together. The big carriers are investing. And well, dead zones are pretty much going to be a thing of the past in the not too distant future. But don't expect that means you're going to have broadband everywhere. Just you'll at least be able to get online, do the basics, send some messages. Okay. And by the way, people do wonder what Apple is up to when it comes to satellite direct to sell. Now, of course, you know, Apple iPhones that are, you know, the, the stuff that AT&T, T-Mobile and Verizon will work with any phones on their network, whether it's an iPhone or not. But Apple has their own satellite technology that they've done in partnership with Global Star that the recent iPhones have that so far has only been used for emergency messaging. We will wait to see what Apple does next with that satellite technology, whether it remains just kind of an exclusive emergency messaging um, uh, Apple thing, 
or whether they try to expand that to even more advanced capabilities. Of course, it's Apple. They are very secretive. There's no word yet on what will come, what the future roadmap for Apple satellite technology will be. But that is separate from the direct-to-sell stuff we're seeing that talks to every regular 4G and 5G phone. Apple's stuff is using a special radio that, well, so far, only Apple devices have built into it in partnership with Global Star. So that's different than what AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, SpaceX, and Space Mobile are working on, um, but is still interesting as well. So a lot of exciting stuff happening in space with direct-to-sell technology. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.